A famous doll named Okiku is stolen from a temple by Haku, the owner of sake bar and restaurant. He believes the doll will help his failing business and bring more customers. Shortly after bringing the doll to the restaurant, strange and horrifying events begin to occur. Haku is forced to temporarily close the restaurant. He then finds Yumanato, a young student with an interest in mysteries and paranormal. Haku tells you he will pay you if you can solve the mystery and calm the spirit of the doll down. You head out one evening on your scooter to begin your investigation. Will you solve the mystery or become a victim of Okiku? Finally, I'm here. I think my uncle Haku left a spare key to the front door near a Buddha statue outside. Okiku Lore Page 1. A young man purchased a doll that would, later on, claim the name of Okiku as her own for his two-year-old sister. The doll was bought in Sapporo by a 17-year-old for his two-year-old sister Okiku. He was touring the region for a maritime exhibition, and the doll instantly drew his eyes. The perfect little thing sat on a shop window enticing him. He didn't think twice, he went in and instantly purchased the figurine for his sister, and even used the last of his money for it. At about 40 cms tall and dressed in a traditional kimono, the doll was exquisite. Its hair was raven black and cut to roughly shoulder length, in a traditional Okapa hairstyle. The eyes like piercing coals that seemed to swallow everything up in their gaze. The doll was mesmerizing and enchanting, something that took your breath away. He went back home and gave the doll to his little sister. The sister fell in love with the doll immediately, it transformed into Okiku's favorite toy and, more importantly, her best friend. Okiku played every day with the doll, took it everywhere, and treated the figurine like a little sister. She would talk and prattle with the thing. Feed it. Sleep with it. She decided to call the doll Okiku, a mirror duplicate of herself. The doll never left Okiku's sight.
<laughs> what was that? Some kind of paranormal activity? I should investigate the area and read all information I can find on Okiku. Okiku lore page 2. Then, a year later, tragedy struck. The little girl who owned the Okika doll died. Yellow fever had descended on the land and robbed the family of their little girl. The little girl died gasping for air. In pain and afraid while the doll held firmly in her grasp. She was only seven years old. The family wanted to bury the doll along with Okiku, but the circumstances and government oversight prevented this last act of kindness on their part. The doll was never laid to rest with Okiku and was instead brought to an ancient temple. Okiku is angry at me, but I won't give up this investigation. I'll look outside for an electricity box to get the lights on again.
Okiku Lore Page 3, Okiku, the doll, was first moved to the family's altar, a common practice in certain Japanese households to commemorate the dead. The small shrine celebrated their daughter and marked her passing into the afterlife. That's when strange events started to occur. 
One day, the family started to notice that the doll's hair was getting longer. Once a traditional shoulder length cut with neat ends, now a mangled mess of split ends reaching down past her waist. It was scruffy, different colors, and felt different. At night they started to dream of Okiku, and sometimes the doll would appear by their sides come morning. The chilling events intensified and grew into full-blown acts of spiritual infestation. Lights flicking on and off, bangings in the house, noises, and strange voices, things being set on fire, and even Okiku duplicating herself and showing up multiple places the closer the year got to certain key dates, Okiku's birthday and the day of her death. Over time, they were certain in town shaman slash spiritual leaders concurred that their daughter's soul was in fact trapped within the doll. Okiku Lore Page 4. Many years later the family relocated to a different district. They had by now become accustomed to Okiku and had even grown fond of their daughter's spirit. To them, it was magical and a unique opportunity to interact with the dead. Not desiring to take Okiku with them fearing what fueled her magic was the proximity to their daughter's grave the family approached the local temple and asked them to take care of the doll. The temple by now had heard of countless stories of the amazing doll, the haunted doll whose hair grew every year. They were fascinated. The priests accepted the charge and started taking care of Okiku. Over time, they've managed to confirm the veracity of some of the claims, particularly that the hair does indeed grow. The priests even sent out cut samples to the hair for scientific analysis. Scientific examination of Okiku proved that the hair was that of a human child. Regularly the hair gets a trim and the doll stays happy and content. As the years passed on, the doll's fame grew and her powers further developed. She's bolder now, invading the dreams of the priest and those that come to visit her. She's stronger, her hair growing faster and wilder. The last event driving tourists mad is the frightening claim is that the mouth of Okiku is slowly opening and that if you dare to peer inside you may be able to glimpse something. Baby teeth spouting like weeds from porcelain gums, 